Well, I am thrilled to introduce you to someone who is a hero of mine in the battle to save mothers' lives. I met Dr. Eve Nakabembe in 2014 when I went to Uganda to report on the shockingly high rate of moms dying in childbirth. She's an obstetrician and she is the director of the Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, a big mouthful, but also a groundbreaking program which Crossroads Relief and Development supports. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You and I have had so many great conversations driving down crazy roads in the back of a hot vehicle in Africa. So this yeah. is rather luxurious to mm. chat here. Mm, it is. It's very different. Well, I grew to be a huge fan of yours when I met you um, for two reasons. I think one is the conditions that you work under. And then the second thing is the heart that you bring and the persistence and the passion that you have to fight for women's lives, no matter what, despite those conditions. Mm. So just start. I just want you to paint a picture for people about kind of the conditions that you deliver mothers in. What, what is it like there? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the first thing, mothers are mothers everywhere. So we, we have the mothers. We have many big numbers of mothers who come to us. But in my kind of facility, uh, because mothers go to different health facilities along the grid, like a health center two, three, four, but many of those uh, health centers are known to have fully functional. They may go there, and maybe the doctor with the skill is not there, or the midwife, mm. they could go to those kind of places and maybe the equipment is not there. So they all end up coming to our bigger hospitals like you saw them. And that was a crazy overcrowded hospital. It, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Women on the floor and the yeah. halls, laboring everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. People can't imagine. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's mothers everywhere, but it's also with them hardly having, you know, anything to, from basics, you know, a decent washroom, water, a bed, like you said, or, you know, just a comfortable chair that you sit and wait before you are attended to. So it, it's, uh, it's, those are the conditions, but it's also the health workers trying so hard to save lives, but, you know, with, without, without much. So many times you have a woman, she's in obstructed labor or some mm. sort of complication. You have the skill, but you're told we cannot do surgery on her because we've run out of clean linen. Mm -hmm. uh, the power is out. Mm -hmm. We don't have sutures. Mm -hmm. We don't have medicine. Or, mm. or even would you have to operate on her without giving her any kind of painkiller? Sometimes it's after the surgery. During the operation, some, you, they buy. Sometimes moms have to go and buy the drugs for their spinal and if it's, yeah, you know, give, give, giving them something to kill their pain. But beyond, because during the surgery, of course, you can't do it without the right um, painkillers and algesia. But after that, you see a mom who's had a C-section and she's in pain, you know. And they're telling her, go and buy your drugs. We wrote them for you. Please go buy them. And she's like, I'm waiting for my husband to bring the money. But when you're in so much pain, you just can't keep waiting for somebody to bring you money. Yeah? And maybe they so, don't have the money. Yeah, and maybe they don't have the money for that. So for us, it, it, it breaks our hearts as well. You know, you see this mom, and sometimes you help, but how many moms can you help, you know, with your resources? How many? That's you, right. Yeah, you, you don't have unlimited you resources yeah, yourself. Yeah, you don't, you don't. And when I look at you, too, I think, you know, um, you've got way too many moms, mm. not enough medical people, and not enough mm. supplies. And mm. so sometimes I know you work. What's the longest shift you've ever worked doing C-sections, for example? You can do C-sections. 24 hours non-stop and it's not that even at the end of 24 hours you have finished but you can't go you can't go on so sometimes I think the longest I've ever done was close to 48 there was nobody to hand over to and there was just emergency after emergency the kind of mom who you either save now or she's gone you know she dies. so you can't you can't walk away you can't walk away and it, it, it's it, it's always funny. Sometimes we the nurses are like, maybe it's you who needs a drip faster because you, your your blood sugar levels just go so low because it's not like the hospitals where here in Canada where there's a fridge you can get some drinking water you can take an apple, you know the mothers sometimes here bring chocolates for the doctors and nurses. No, it's it's a different. It's a completely different setting. So you, you know? could literally be 48 hours doing C-sections with no food, no water, and no sleep. You have to look for it yourself. If you need any water, you have to be like, somebody, can you go buy me this? Or somebody, can you go buy me a soda? So some of those are, you know, um, situations. It's sometimes what discourages some health workers who leave 
um, it, it takes it takes courage and commitment and faith for you to stay and you all can't walk away you know somebody needs to stay and help the moms I know and then I think about when do you decide that you have to go home so 48 hours and there's still nobody there and moms are dying like the decision to go get sleep sometimes is to let someone die and yet you you can't physically you're not superwoman. Yeah, you, you, you're not, yeah. It, it, it's a team. The, the teams may be small, but people really have a team spirit. It, it's, not, it's not you only. You, you're few, but sometimes you're like, okay, you know what? I think um, let me go away and somebody take over. Um, the midwives are always there, so the, and they're also few, but what they will do, they'll line up all the moms and tell them, you know, you have to wait. You, we know this is... You have to wait. So in our kind of hospitals, a mother can wait for an emergency section for a whole day. Like she's supposed to have an emergency cesarean on Tuesday and she gets it on Wednesday. And of course the outcome, yeah, sometimes the outcome is, is that. You come the next day and you find she had you know, a decision made for an emergency cesarean section. But there was nobody to do it. And sometimes if there's somebody to do it, the sterile linen was finished. The sterilizer doesn't work. There were no sutures. You know, there are all these reasons why it couldn't be done. It, yeah. it, it's more than us being available. Even when we are available, there are just some other the resources know, yeah, aren't there. Some, and then sometimes they'll have obstructed labor, or the baby will die in utero, or you know, they they live with medical complications for the rest of their life because of the delay. It really, is a part of the problem. Yeah. Well, you know, just like so much of the work that I do around the world, I could get extremely depressed. <laughs> looking at that picture because it can be so overwhelming but the truth is that it doesn't have to stay that way and you are part of a team that we partner with with Save the Mothers who are working to change that. Give me a sense of what you're doing and what you're seeing. Uh, what we are doing, like we already know what is uh, giving the moms uh, big complications, what is killing the moms. So we have come, we, we are working on interventions through the Mother Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative it's a mouthful even it for me. Yeah, <laughs> so at home we call it MBFHI. We never try to say it in full. <laughs> MBFHI, uh, even that's hard. But it, it, it's really telling uh, moms and the community and everybody that can we give every mother a safe and dignified childbirth and try to save every baby who doesn't have to die during the process of pregnancy and childbirth. So it is all of us coming on board. It's people like you. We, we love the media and the journalists because they take the story, you know. They carry the story. Otherwise, we are talking to ourselves. We are in our own small world and we are, you know, oppressed, depressed. But when we see our story going to different people's homes and people just getting to know about what's going on in other moms' lives, that, that is a, it's a big thing for us. It's a big encouragement for us. And then we, we're dealing with a social scientist, we're dealing with politicians, we're dealing with just people who have no just hospitality and leisure. I mean, you came and saw some of those hospitals. There's not even a chair, you know, for you to sit. Huh? They, there's not even just some drinking water for the health workers, but even for the moms, you know, a mom just needs a cup of warm water, just, you know, and it's not there. So it's, it's all of us coming together and then we, we give them the best possible quality care that they can have in their setting. Well, and some of the touring that we did when I was in Uganda mm -hmm. was that we looked at um, facilities that had been adopted by the yep. Mother ba Baby Friendly yeah. Hospital Initiative for a couple <laughs> of years try, yeah. and other ones that were just coming on. And you could see the change, not mm. even just, I mean, obviously the facilities. So sometimes we'll show pictures of beds that are ripped and yeah. mattresses and people yeah. will say, oh, that's terrible. But in actual fact, it's unsanitary. Mm. And if you've just had surgery and you're on that bed, um, many times you can get diseases that will mm. kill you. Mm. So mm. it's a big, it's a much bigger issue. And mm. but changing everything. Um, the, the tools that you need to do your job, the medicine mm. that you need, mm. the sutures that mm. you need, making sure that there's electricity, that there's a generator, and that mm. there's gas. I mean, mm. I was talking to a doctor. <laughs> he was operating, and the power went out, and there's a generator, but there's no gas for the generator. Mm. There's nobody to go buy the gas for the mm. generator. So it's, it's so complex, but also just the attitude of the health workers yeah. was a huge thing. That, like that fight, you know, you told me a story. Um, a few days ago about a mom who was dying mm. and they and she was bleeding out she had a placenta on her um, uterus and they thought that she was dead mm. and you went over and checked her pulse and she still had one and what did you do tell, just tell me that story because I think it's that kind of the difference is the attitude and the fight that, that you have and others bring that that mm. save mom's lives mm, mm. Uh, that that is actually one of the days that I was doing at the end of that day I had like 21 cesareans that had to be done that we did 
But um, you have the nurses handling some of the moms who may not need surgery, who can be, you know, handled, and they don't need uh, an obstetrician around. And uh, one of the this this mom actually had a very sad story. Like she had lost her baby already in utero, so she was being delivered over dead baby. You know, mm. so the midwife delivered the baby, and yeah, of course the mom was really traumatized. And I think she was attempting to remove the placenta, but she. She, she, she failed to remove the placenta and she said, I think it will come out. Maybe it will not come out, you know. And the mom was bleeding torrentially. I was in the operating room and, you know, there were all these other moms there attending to. So when she calls me and she's like, I, I, think, I think this mom is dead. But because for her death is, is the norm, like moms will get complications and sorry, we don't have the ability to help them kind of uh, attitude. She sees it a lot. Not that I don't see it a lot, but it's... Knowing that every mom counts for the moment. You have a hundred moms, but if you're having your five minutes with this mom, that is the only mom you have to save, you know. That's what I tell them, that we, we have so many people and we have so many situations, but any ten minutes you have with somebody, give the best possible attention, the best possible care that you can give. Yeah. So she called me and this mom was in a pool of blood. She's in shock, you know. She, you could just see her saying, okay, I'm going to be another statistics. You know, I'm going to be... I'm going to be added to, you know, and this is it, yeah? So I just remember coming and I'm like, no, 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 this mom is still alive, you know? And yeah, of course, the rest is history. Like, we took her on, we took her to OR, we did all these measures. You and operated on her and yeah, you were able to save her life. It would save her life. And that's what it takes. It takes, it, you know, and that's why working with the healthcare workers, it takes that that extra something, you know, to save mom's it life, does. to push and save. And you know, this was happen. mother, actually she was a mother 21. So you can imagine if you're like, you know what? I've just had a long 24 hours. Yeah. It, that's uh, the, the tragedy and also sometimes a challenge. Huh? This mom will just come in and she's, she's, she is dying, but you are exhausted. You are literally burnt out. Eh? Yeah. So I, I just kept checking myself and I'm like, Lord, I wish this was mother number two. <laughs> I know, I know. And you pushed through and you saved your life. And that's why I started the interview by saying that you're one of my heroes because you are, you are so, you're such a quiet, calm person and you have such a, a lion within you that fights for mothers. And so we're so pleased to partner with you. Thank you for all you're doing for moms. I don't know if you hear that enough, but we so appreciate you. Thank you, too. Thank you. It's Thank been a you. pleasure to have you. Thank you. Very and if, if you've been watching this and you want to make a difference for moms dying in East Africa, we're partnering with Save the Mothers. We're adopting clinics and we're making a difference. You can call the number on your screen or you can go to crossroads.ca. Come join us. Let's change things for mothers. We'll be right back.